um, CMAs for past clients. So uh, for the people that you've sold homes to, a good thing to touch on. And if you are consistent with it, um, maybe end of the year, sending out just a, a little CMA, you know, hey, just want to let you know, you know, here's where your home value is. Everybody likes to know. Um, you're not trying to sell them anything or anything like that, but these can be easily done from all of your past clients that you sold homes to because everybody wants to track their equity. Um, that's just something people do for the most part. So um, it's a very easy thing to say, hey, I do this once a year for all my clients and uh, here's which current home value is and keep me in mind for you know friends and family kind of thing. Uh, newsletters, um, if you've been thinking about getting a newsletter together, uh, they are underrated, I think. Um, I get them all the time. I get a ton of them from lenders. Um, occasionally, I get on a mailing list for uh, just other realtors and things like that. But, um, you know, it's a good time of year to implement that because there's lots of events and things going on that you can talk about in your newsletter. Um, Halloween things coming up, obviously Thanksgiving events, Christmas tree lightings, all of this kind of stuff that just happen within our communities. Um, so those are easy things to put together for a newsletter if you want to get that started. And then obviously you want to keep that going uh, after the beginning of the year. But um, there's a ton of places that you can go to to get one going. A lot of them have newsletter templates already and it's just like a little bit of plug and play if you're doing it once a month this is not a hard thing to do um, i'd say probably be less than an hour of your time each month to put together a newsletter and send it out to your email list so and then you want to always be building that email list as well with these other events and campaigns and, and things like that obviously um final closing statements they will need this for their taxes so you um, sending out the um, uh, closing statement for when they bought their home uh, along with a Christmas card or separate or however you want to do it is something they're going to need. <laughs> and you'll, you'll find a lot of times they may reach out to you the following year and say, hey, do you have a copy of my closing statement? And so just providing that, especially if you sold something, you know, earlier in their year and you haven't connected with them and sending it out just saying, hey, you're going to need this for your taxes. Hope everything's been great, you know, so on and so forth and uh, get that sent out to them. Um, let's see what else. Getting back to the community, uh, just a couple of little wrap up things here. This is easy. Um, Again, there's a lot of outreach during this time of year, a lot of volunteer opportunity. Um, again, these are not times to say, I'm, I'm a realtor, do you wanna list your home with me? This is you just getting involved with the community and making connections with other people locally. Um, you can do this obviously throughout the year, um, but these next few months are an easy time to do it. Um, so reach out opportunity for your sphere of influence. Again, this is not a solicitation of business. Uh, it's a sincere reach out for the benefit of the charity or volunteer organization. So if you do not have a regular charity or volunteer group that you donate time to, try reaching out to your sphere of influence and offer your time to a group they are working with. Um, maybe you're new to the area and you don't have much of a sphere of influence. Um, but you do know a couple people, or maybe you want to start getting involved with something locally, this is where you can start creating some sphere of influence as well through volunteer groups and other things like that where you're donating some time. Um, so that's this is an easy time of year to kind of jump into that and, and give yourself a little bump with your sphere of influence. Um, Another thing is that I've seen, I've, I've had realtors do this in my own neighborhood, um, actually every year, it's not even the same person, um, is they, they want to pick up items um, to go and donate, uh, essentially on your behalf, I guess. And so, you know, they, they'll go and door knock, 
Uh, they usually have a flyer that they'll drop off stating that they're, you know, picking up canned goods or blankets or jackets or something like that for a certain nonprofit. And they'll be back again on Thursday to come and pick everything up. Just put it outside, put it in a bag. You don't need to be home. Just put it outside. I'll come pick it up. Um, you know, the flyer, yes, it has your name. It has your GRE number, it has your, your company logo on it. But it's not anything having to do with real estate. It's it's about picking up for that uh, particular organization. And then obviously you go and drop that stuff off. Um, school support. Um, if you have kids in school, even if you don't, but if you do, uh, great opportunity. There's lots of events coming up to donate time to. I know my children's elementary school every year did a really big fall festival um they had a haunted house uh we, we would convert the little lunch area to this whole haunted house that's usually what all the dads worked on was the haunted house um and then uh they had a ton of booths that needed to be uh built and uh, game booths and things like that so a great time to really donate and spend time with people um at some of those events you know and have genuine conversations and connections and things like that. Um, if you don't have that kind of time, um, at least maybe donating things that will be needed for their upcoming events, um, you know, that helps as well. Um, someone uh, did put in um, some, some uh, a company that they use for branding and things like that, for newsletters, postcards, and things like that. So check the chat. And last but not least, client appreciation event. And I know everybody always sees dollar signs when they think of client appreciation event. It doesn't have to be $10,000, you know? Um, it could be as easy as calling up your local ice cream shop or, or something like that and just say, hey, you know, from the hours of two to four, um, I'm going to have, you know, my, my clients come over and I, I'm going to pay the bill, you know, for, for their dessert. And maybe you want to make it like on a Thursday or maybe a Friday or something like that, maybe after school, um, so that they can go straight from school over to that little event. And we're literally talking a couple hundred dollars, um, in, in marketing dollars, right? And that's your client appreciation event. Obviously, you want to be there and mingle with everybody and have, you know, some of your stuff out and things like that. But it doesn't have to be a huge extravagant thing that costs thousands and thousands of dollars. You know, just think think local and think, um, you know, if you're going to get it started, it doesn't have to be huge. You know, just do something kind of small and let it be known that it's your client appreciation event. And, um, you, you know, you're going to do it once a quarter, once a year, whatever it is. If you don't want to commit to that, you don't have to. But again, now's a good time to do that kind of thing because we're rounding out the year. So um, uh, someone said they can't see the link uh, in the chat. They put a phone number if that's what you're looking for. So. Um, so that's about all I have for seasonal marketing ideas. Again, this isn't, um, you know, no one of these things is going to save your business, right? You have to do multiple things and you have to be consistent with it. The only person that's going to save your business or grow your business is you. So um, I just wanted to share a lot of ideas because there's just a lot of things that you can start over the next few months, hopefully this month, because this is a great month and then you'll have three really great months to get started with some really good marketing stuff that you can carry through into the next year. And more than likely you will have some business coming from this that will, you know, lead into 2025. So um, hopefully you got your uh, wheels turning a bit and I'm happy to do, you know, if you want to sit down one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom and go over some some ideas 
uh, that you're thinking about. I'm happy to, you know, bounce ideas and things like that. We can also just do a phone call. Um, I like talking about that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, I, I've heard of a lot of other things that other realtors have done as well that I might be able to share to you and if it was a success or not, why it was, why it wasn't, so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, so if you need anything, um, always give me a call. Um, I hope you have a great week and uh, we'll talk to you soon.